Uh, continuing with our theme of focusing on the economy, in our special segment, It's the Economy, we try to find out if there is a pickup in rural and agri demand and to understand if there's generally an increase in consumption when the government gives out rural SOPs or farm income schemes. Sunil Dugal, the CEO of Dabur, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Dugal, good morning and as always, thank you for joining us on the show. There are some, you know, uh, uh, channel checks You're that welcome. indicate that the rural demand is not that great. In fact, it's been pretty soft in this quarter. Uh, you tell us what's happening on the ground and by when uh, do you think, uh, you know, normalcy will return? Well, there is a slackening of demand, there's no doubt about that. And uh, that's both in rural and urban. Uh, it's a consequence, obviously, of uh, tight liquidity, uh, uh, agrarian distress, and uh, joblessness. But we do hope that this is a temporary phenomenon. I think the stimulus uh, which was promised by the government has not yet flown in, but it will over the next uh, few weeks. And that should uh, mean so that there will be some demand pickup. At the moment, the situation is a little bit worse than what it was in the previous quarters. And it's uh, magnified to some extent that we now have a fairly high base of the previous year. And, and that kind of makes the growth even harder. But uh, I think it'll abate. I'm not too worried about the long term or the, even the medium term. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Dugal. Pleasure having you with us. Uh, since when is the slowdown? Would you trace it to last October, Thank you. September? Uh, no. I think uh, quarter three was uh, reasonably good. Quarter four is when the stress uh, began to show. Uh, in some cases, uh, uh, for companies uh, uh, like ours, the prolonged winters in the North India, which was extraordinarily, uh, it's still pretty chilly uh, in, in, in Delhi and North, meant that the summer products, which normally have a great uh, month in the month of March and starting February and into March, mm -hmm. are now sh are not showing uh, some fatigue. And uh, till the summer picks up, I don't think there'll be a big revival of demand of uh, the summer products, beverages, glucose, mm -hmm some of the uh, gastro products, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a combination of these three or four events which has meant that the demand is slackening. But uh, every reason to uh, indicate that the summer will be long and hot, that's what the Med Department says. And like I said earlier, the stimulus which should kick in uh, from the next few weeks should also help pick up in demand. So yeah. uh, I don't think it's a situation which we need worry about too much at this point in time. You should sell those products in Bombay. Uh, I mean, it's like sweltering heat over here. Uh, it's, it almost feels like we are into end April <laughs> yeah. and not end March. Yeah, uh, we, but, we do. <laughs> no, but Mr. Dugal, I, I, I... Which is what is happening. In fact, uh, sales in South and West are, mm -hmm. are better. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, no, I just wanted Sorry, to ask yeah, you, you typically saying? how do election cycles play? Uh, one assumes that political parties spend a lot. Uh, and then, of course, there is this government's uh, 2,000 uh, rupee uh, money that has been given to several families, several crore families. Uh, so what's your uh, uh, anticipation of how it will play out? Well, rather, the money has not yet flown in. Uh, it's coming in trickles, and uh, I think it will uh, become uh, far, far quicker in the weeks ahead. Um, and uh, the spending also seems to be comparatively muted this year. Uh, there is a liquidity issue, and uh, we don't see that kind of uh, pre-poll spending as we did in the earlier uh, elections. So overall, uh, there is a serious liquidity issue which is impacting our uh, trade, maybe not so much consumption at the, uh, at, at the retail level, but uh, definitely the trade is downstocking because uh, they don't really have the money to stock up. Yeah, that's, uh, in fact, it's not just you and your industry, but a whole host of uh, industries have indicated, you know, about this slowdown and yes. undercutting, etc. But because of all of this, do you reckon that FY20 could be a year of uh, single-digit volume growth? Not to be ruled out. We do hope that uh, it will, um, uh, things will write themselves out and we will see double-digit growth next year. But... Uh, now, on a normal base, which we saw in 1819, uh, even a high single-digit volume growth is uh, something which uh, uh, we should not uh, be uh, very uh, unhappy about. Uh, I think that's a reasonable growth. And if you're lucky and the monsoon is good and the economy picks up and stimulus happens uh, to the level which is promised, then the growth could trend uh, back into double digits. But at the moment, uh, I think high single digits is something which uh, we are uh, looking at, but it's early days. Let's see how it pans out and how the monsoon pans out. Mm. What about margins, uh, Mr. Dugal? Uh, after all, there has been a sizable drop in food prices, which means uh, some of these uh, uh, farm products could be your raw material. Uh, do you see margins better off for the fourth quarter? Well, I do see margins trending up now. Uh, whether it will happen in the fourth quarter or, uh, or early next year, 
that's that's a matter of timing. But uh, definitely the margin outlook is far more benign. The challenge is really to move the top line. Okay, yeah. and uh, the competition as well from uh, Patanjali, uh, which seemed uh, a lot more ferocious maybe two years ago, uh, it, it seems to have ebbed now. If you can give us an idea of the competitive landscape. Uh, it's pretty much normal, except for the fact that Patanjali uh, is no longer the, has the momentum which it did uh, even one year ago, certainly not uh, mm. what it did two years ago. Mm. So that's helping uh, things along. Our brands like Honey, etc., which did have some impact from Patanjali, are now doing exceedingly well, showing strong double-digit growths. Um, but um, I think uh, we, we uh, can't just look at the Patanjali element to drive our growth. It's got to be the larger picture in terms of overall consumption and demand. Mm. And that's something which, like I said, uh, does not appear to be too good at this point in time. We spoke a lot about the rural trends. What about urban and semi-urban? How have the trends looked compared to what they were about six months back? I don't think there's a much uh, difference in terms of the consumption pattern at this point in time between rural and urban. Mm. Uh, perhaps rural was ahead of urban by around 25, 30%. Now it's uh, at the similar levels, but the consumption stress is showing in both the areas. And we're seeing it um, uh, in, uh, even in modern trade, which was earlier driving growth uh, quite spectacularly. So that's also slowing down. But like I said, I don't think this is going to last. I think it's a matter of a month or two before it picks up. Okay. No, there are, uh, there are some economists who make a slightly secular case uh, for rural distress uh, because, uh, you know, uh, for all societies, uh, food output and food consumption plateaus beyond a point. As well, uh, you know, we've yeah. not seen any construction activity. That used to be the big magnet for surplus rural labor. Uh, that's been on, uh, you know, on almost, almost comatose for the past several years. So do you think this slowdown may not be all that near term or am I getting my diagnosis very wrong? Well, I think, um, you know, the joblessness issue is something which uh, nobody has uh, any answers to. Mm. And uh, while infrastructure building is picking up, it has picked up, and you do see incredible amount of road building activity, what uh, one tends to forget is that uh, road building and other infra activities are increasingly mechanized. Mm. And if you drive down the highways, you used to see an army of workers, you know, carrying stuff on their head and uh, making roads. Mm. Now you have these huge machines, uh, you know, laying down roads at the rate of uh, one kilometer a day. So there's a big difference uh, which is happening in terms of uh, the type of jobs which are there. Uh, and therefore, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the pressure on government to provide stimulus and dole because uh, job creation is uh, something which uh, don't, does, doesn't have any near-term answers. So I think the, the, the way this economy will move forward will be a little bit different than what is envisaged. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think the consumption sector, especially staples consumption, will be a victim because that still has a lot of headroom to grow. Okay. Uh... Why that? I mean, what makes you so confident? Because of demand stickiness in the in you know the consumer staples business like soaps etc. Vis a vis say the larger players like the auto players etc. Because you know the other industries are indicating that the slowdown can continue at least until Diwali. What makes you so confident that um, it's just a couple of months away before which we see normalcy return? Most important indicator is stimulus, which is going to be provided by the government. Now, universal basic income, and that is in a state the distress, uh, both and as well as on account of jobs. So uh, now, th this kind of uh, uh, dispensation to the economy will definitely mean that uh, staples will benefit. Now, I don't know about the high-value staples, autos, etc. They may not be so much advantaged, but certainly um, uh, the stuff which we make okay. uh, will continue to be pretty secular in terms of demand. Okay. A final question on uh, your Ayurveda business, prescription Ayurveda business. Uh, can you just give us some color on the potential, the performance? Mm. I think the, uh, the prescription Ayurveda business is uh, not a huge one. It's around 200, 200, 250 crores. But it's really the incubator to take products uh, from, the, from our Ayurvedic stable, from prescriptive to OTC oh. and then FMHG. So it's really the incubator, and it has, a, it has a huge role beyond its size in terms of its impact on our healthcare business. Okay, oh. FMAG is uh, fast-moving Ayurvedic goods? Sorry? Uh, FMAG, you said? 
FM, FM edgy, fast moving healthcare, healthcare goods. goods. Okay. So that's right. the internal jargon we use for uh, OTC right. products. Yes. Fair enough. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dugal. Pleasure speaking with you. Uh, and uh, thank you for thank giving you. us this color about the way rural demand Likewise. has not panned out this uh, quarter, but may pan out as uh, the government flows start trickling in. Okay, so uh, a lot of sectors, uh, a lot of sectoral experts or industry veterans believe that even FY20 is going to be a single digit growth year. You heard Dabur say that and uh, market leader in the tractor business Mahindra and Mahindra also forecast a slowdown in the tractor industry. After three good growth years, they say FY19 will end with a sub 10% growth. FY20 will also in all likelihood be a single digit growth year. Here's a slice of that conversation. When we are saying in the tractor business demand has been slow, we need to step back and see how the last three years have been. So we've come out of three years of good growth, 22%, uh, 18% kind of numbers, and the current year is going to be close to between 9 odd percent, around 9 to 10%. So we've seen a very dramatic growth in the tractor market over the last three years. Uh, the tractor market size now is close to 800,000 per year. Mm. Uh, very, very large size and a large base to operate out of. So when we say demand has been slow, we have to see it in the context of base and we have to see it in the context of the absolute size. Mm. Uh, yes, sales have been slow festival, se uh, you know, post-festival season, uh, lower than what we expected. Sure, we'll come to that. Before that, you said there's going to be about a 9 to 10 percent growth by the end of FY19. Yeah. Uh, what about FY20? Uh, do you think after three years of an up cycle, do you think this industry is getting into sort of a down cycle where we could see single digit growth in FY20 as well? We would expect F20 to be a single digit uh, year growth. We still haven't put a number on uh, what we would expect that to be, but we certainly don't expect a double digit next year. Uh, so we'll wait and watch and maybe by April we'll put out a number for next year, mm. but we expect it to be single digit. Okay, you know the big issue that the industry as a whole is facing, not just tractors but four wheelers, two wheelers, is high inventory levels. Yeah. I was talking to a couple of dealers who indicated that inventory levels in the tractor industry are, are as high as two months plus. Is yeah. that true? Uh, I, I think that would be true of the industry and I would like to say that that's not so true of us. Okay. And the reason for that is we've been very mindful and uh, as soon as we've seen that the festival season was slower than what we expected we have started bringing inventory levels down and that's happened through december jan feb uh, all the three months so what is the inventory level currently uh, compared to what it was say about six months ago and has the company consciously cut down production to rationalize inventory our dealer inventory is in our, in the range of our norms uh, which is typically in the region of 30 to 40 days. Okay. Right. So that's normally our norm, and we are by and large within our norm. Mm. Of course, when we talk about days, days is a function. Days inventory is a function of what your demand is. Mm. Right. So it depends on the base that you calculate it on. Mm. Uh, but right now we are very close to our norm, mm. and uh, we've made the corrections over the last uh, two, three months post festival season. Mm. to adjust to demand yes maybe a little bit more correction is needed depending on how we see quarter one mm. and we are in that process of estimating what quarter one will need but uh, we've done most of our adjustments. So in production in percentage terms how much have you brought down your production by uh, say over the last few months? Uh, we, we haven't had to do any significant oh, correction haven't. in production okay. because we have done that as we went. Okay. Right, so because we were cutting back our billing to correct for dealer inventory, mm. we've kind of adjusted our production. Okay, so coming back to the demand situation, uh, tell us what's happening on the ground. Is it across the board where you're seeing a slowdown or is it disparate with respect to geographies? It is clearly disparate with respect to geographies. So some states have been hurt more by the rains and some others are actually not. Many of the northern markets, UP, MP, Bihar, even the eastern markets are seeing reasonable levels of growth. The slowdown has been the southern markets, mm. specifically Telangana, AP, Karnataka, and then on the west side. Mm. Uh, west side, uh, Maharashtra has been slow, mm. uh, Gujarat has been very slow, Rajasthan has been slow. So it's, you can clearly see a you know, kind of very region specific, uh, uh, and that's been linked with the way the rain has panned out as well. What is the genesis of the weakness? Right now, I think in the short term, one key driver of why demand is low 
is the agri prices, the agri output prices. Okay. Uh, the second, of course, was that the rubby crop was not as good as people expected. Mm. And that's really what led to the slowdown in the rubby strongholds uh, post uh, the festival season or through the festival season. Mm. So I would think these two would be the two key short-term drivers which have impacted demand. Okay. But on the operational front, you know, we noticed after a couple of quarters of 20% plus margins, yeah. in the last quarter it fell to about 19%. I mean, it's still strong margins, but yeah. there is some pressure that we're seeing. Uh, we have to look at the last two years as a period when commodity prices have really escalated. Mm. Right, so we've seen significant increase in commodity prices. We've passed on most of them. Uh, we've compensated some of it by other cost reduction areas. And uh, hence, there is going to be some adjustment in margin when your uh, level of commodity price increases as high mm. uh, as what we've seen in the recent past.